The goal here is to create a digital assistant for offline model inference and get it to generate textual responses. This will be a foundation so that over time we can add features like conversational loops, text to speech, speech to text, streaming, or image generation. But how do you do this if you have a computer that is not compatible with LM Studio or Llama.cpp? Or what if you just want to explore using the Hugging Face base models without using the quantized models? I have not found anything online that shows you how to do that. It may be there, but I got tired of searching. The closest that I have found is on each model's Hugging Face page, but the authors tend to leave out explanations or tutorials on how to do this. I also see videos where people use Colab or Jupyter Notebooks, but don't explain how to move the code from the notebook to a Python environment and then code it in a Python script. I'll share what I discovered regarding offline model inferencing without LM Studio, Llama CPP, or notebooks. This will get your local inference started. You can create the next iteration on your own or wait until the next video on this. Learn with me as I learn. The first step is to create an environment on your computer. I used GPT-4 to explain this concept and process to me. You should do the same. Anything that GPT-4 or Gemini could not explain to me, I will cover in this video. If I know that they can help you with something, I will leave it out. But basically, the idea is to install either Miniconda or Anaconda. I believe you can also use VS Code to do this, but Miniconda and Anaconda are the two options that I've used. With Anaconda or Miniconda, you will create a specific environment to utilize Python and all the libraries you need. Environments are like many operating systems on your computer. You activate your environment, enter into it, and then you can install additional libraries that you may need into that environment. The environment is the place where you build your digital assistant application. Libraries are to Python what plugins are to Photoshop, Premiere, or Final Cut Pro. Third parties also make additional plugins or effects or features that give you additional tools. Libraries are those additional tools. Pandas, Whisper, and OpenAI are Python libraries. You can build an entire application or piece of software using Python and libraries. You'll use your GPT, Gemini, Claude, or whatever AI assistant you prefer to get that information and get it installed. After Anaconda or Miniconda is installed and you create an environment, activate that environment. Again, use your model to explain all of this to you. Next, you will find an open source model on Hugging Face. We are not dealing with quantized models in this video because if your system is not compatible with LM Studio or Llama.cpp, then as far as I know, this also means that your system cannot use quantized models. For this project, we will download a base model. You can find them here in the Hugging Face model pages in the Files tab. They're usually named model.safe-tensors. These files are the full, uncompressed, non-quantized models. These are bigger files than the GGUF or quantized files used in LM Studio or Llama.cpp. If you try to use the GGUF files, or files that say 4-bit or 8-bit for this approach, it's not going to work. I think those files require CUDA. I also think this is why LM Studio and Llama.cpp don't work 
on Intel Max. This method using the model.safe tensors files is for people that don't have CUDA or want the full model. So if you have an old MacBook or an old iMac or you just don't have CUDA on your computer graphics card or onboard graphics, quantized files are not going to work. Let's go to a script that is usually provided by the open source model author that gets the model inference started. If you don't have a computer science background or you're not a coder and this is not your area of expertise, you may not understand what all of this code is for. The authors don't usually explain all of the steps on how to implement this. But remember, they did the hard work. They made the model and they made it open source and free and they paid for it. So what more could I ask for? When I was first introduced to Hugging Face, I didn't know what this was and I didn't know how to use it. So I skipped over it and I found out about LM Studio and that was easier. But now I'm trying to go a little deeper into this and get a better understanding. Start with this. Copy this code here. Usually this will work. Create a new document here in your IDE. I'm using VS Code. Paste the code, name it, save it as a .py file, a Python file. Activate your environment. Remember, just talk to your GPT or Gemini and ask, what is an environment? Or say, give me a step-by-step -step tutorial on environments. Or give me step-by-step -step instructions on how to activate an environment. Gone are the days when I go to community forums. I've never had much success on community forums. Now we have our own digital assistants like Gemini and they help us to build our own projects. To demonstrate this step, I will use a model that I have not set up yet. Now run this code. The easy way to do this in VS Code is just click this up here. It runs it down below in the terminal. If it's the first time that you're running this, the first thing it will do is start downloading all of the files you need into a .cache folder. Let's pause for a second. Now you can let this finish here and it will install everything you need and you will be done and ready to go. But let's say you have data constraints with your Wi-Fi situation. Let's say you don't have unlimited data or don't want to download these large files this way. Let's say for whatever reason you want to go somewhere else to get the big files over someone else's internet connection maybe Starbucks or the library or your school or somewhere where you're not paying for the data. If that is the case, then you can start this process here in the terminal and it will start downloading the small files that are kilobytes and megabytes in size. It's going to create the directories starting with the .cache folder. Now, in order to see the .cache directory or folder, you have to make sure that you have turned on the option to show hidden files. If you don't know how to do that, again, just ask GPT or Gemini Advanced. Now you'll see the files that we saw in the Hugging Face Files tab. It has now downloaded those files, the ones you need, into this folder. Now, why do it this way? Well, you could do this another way. You could use the terminal to clone the repo, or you could use the terminal to manually create the directories or folders for you and then populate them for you. But then you're gonna have to know the commands in the terminal or ask Gemini or GPT. Then you have to make sure that you name the folders correctly. So this is the easier way. If you use this Python code that the creator of the model gave you and you run it, the first thing it's gonna do is create the directories for you so you don't have to worry about that. You can let it download some of the smaller files and then once it starts downloading the big model file, the three gigabyte or six gigabyte file, you stop it. Right click on the terminal and select kill terminal. This will stop the download but we'll leave the folders and files that were already downloaded in place.
navigate to see that everything you need is there minus the model.savetensors file. You could be out camping and you don't have a Wi-Fi signal, but you have a phone and you have unlimited data on your phone, but you have limited hotspot data. There's all kinds of scenarios and I just wanted to show you this option here, which is helpful because it also shows you the folder structure and it shows you what's going on inside, where the files are stored. I think that's valuable to understand. Let's say you're using your phone or you don't have a laptop, so you can't bring a laptop to the library or Starbucks or to school, or you can't do this at work because you shouldn't be using work resources to do this unless it's permitted. Let's say you use your cell phone and you have 55 gigs of mobile data and you can spare 5 gigs. Using your phone's browser, navigate to the Hugging Face site and download it on your phone. Now you have it on your phone. Let's say you have a Mac but you have an Android phone but you can't connect your phone to your Mac because the Mac doesn't read the Android phone. Well, if you have a Raspberry Pi 3B even, you can connect your Android phone to the Raspberry Pi. You can paste it there. Then you can plug a USB stick in or an external hard drive into the Raspberry Pi. And then you can transfer the files. Now you've got this large file. So all you need to do is navigate back to the .cache folder Navigate to the folder that will be named after the model. Then in here, paste the model.safetensors file in there. Clear the terminal screen if you like and run the script again. This time, it won't download anything because everything it needs is now in there. As long as before you kill the terminal process, you let it download all the other smaller files first and then killed it as it began to download the model.safetensors file. Now, once you've manually put the model file into this directory, you can start inferencing with the offline model. Depending on your system, inferencing might be slow but you're now one step closer to having a better understanding of the entire process of how you can utilize Hugging Face and you did it without using some other software. You're doing it via code. You don't need some application that may not be compatible with your system. The first step is done. The model is on your computer and it works. You're offline and nothing is going into the interweb. Now you go on to the next step. This code is only asking one predetermined question to the model, but I want it to be able to have a continuous conversation, a conversational loop. I recommend you try to add this on your own. If you don't know how to approach this, then let me remind you. Copy the code you started with. Paste it into Gemini or GPT. Say, I'm inferencing an offline hugging face model. This is the code that I use to get it going. I want to add a continuous loop or a continuous conversation. Please provide the code. It will give you the code. Absolutely. Here's the code with a continuous conversation loop and explanations to guide you. Key enhancements. Continuous conversation enables engaging and natural back and forth interactions. Context awareness. The model leverages past interactions to provide relevant and coherent responses. Temperature control. Adjust the temperature parameter to tune the randomness of the model's output. Higher equals more creative. Lower equals more focused. Graceful exit. The user can easily terminate the conversation by typing exit. Paste it into the original file, overwriting the previous code. If something doesn't work, copy the error message that you get 
At this point, you won't even have to say anything else. As long as you stay in the same conversation, the model will know the context. Hit enter. It will understand that you got an error. It will read the errors and give you the solution and the new code. If it doesn't give you the code, you can say, please give me the code. If you look at the code and see that it took shortcuts and there's a section that says something like the rest of the code goes here, just know that that can lead to mistakes. So then tell it, no, please write out the entire code. Don't take any shortcuts and don't use placeholders. Write it all out for me, please. That's how you use your online digital assistant to build your offline digital assistant. That's how you figure this out. And that's how you get to the next version. Unless you are fluent in Python, then If this worked for you, let me know in the comments. If you still can't get this done or the inferencing is too slow for you, then another option is to use the Hugging Face API key. I hope to share how to do that in a future video. I'm like your fellow classmate, documenting my discoveries and providing insights, notes, and code snippets that I hope is helpful. Learn with me as I learn.